Hi, my name is Lissy and we are going to draw a pigeon today with gouache brushes that is inspired by the copy-paste pigeons that were inside our garden. I already drew this this month or as in June when I'm recording this and uh, this is how it looked like and I made a more realistic, I guess, um, proportionate sketch of it this time. And here's the reference image. See, they are copy-paste. So this is our copy-paste pigeons. So they are not going to be grey, uh, or at least I am planning to use different colours than grey, mostly on the blues and a bit of pink. I made this colour palette uh, from a drawing that I did before, and... Uh, I want to use this, but if I deviate from it, well, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, um, it's really not uh, set in stone what colors you use. So what you downloaded from my Patreon is uh, a stamp. You can uh, stamp out the sketch on your canvas and uh, you can fit to canvas and then it's big and you can just position it wherever you want. I have a huge canvas, so for me it's um, it's always going to be really big like this. But uh, be mindful that the middle point of this drawing is, uh, if you position to the middle, it's not going to feel balanced on your canvas. You have to bring it a bit to the right to make it feel more balanced, or if you flip it horizontally then you have to bring it more towards the left because of the mass of it so I just wanted to let you know and uh, I think we should start painting so this is my sketch that I did this is the original version and what I'm going to do is really experimental and uh, what we are doing now is I'm going to pick up this brush that is from the Moonshine Paints. It looks like this when I press down really hard and uh, it can make these wonderful juicy lines. I will zoom in so you can see. And we are going to make feathers this way. Just drawing short strokes and let it layer on itself. And then uh, it will give a feathery look. I hope this is my uh, this is my hopes for this drawing. So let's just uh, get into it, but with more of a mid blue. And uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going from this part of the neck and uh, I will try to make it look like that uh, this pigeon has cute feathers like cute small feathers by uh, making very small strokes and uh, it should look really juicy and cool And we are going to switch up the colors as well to make it more realistic looking, like more how a gouache, thick gouache, very thick gouache. Even I would say maybe it's like an acrylic painting would look like. But I'm going to layer or lay down a base color here. I usually am very light-handed with my brushes, but this technique requires me to press down hard with the brush, so uh, it's very weird for now. <laughs> and uh, I need some brightness on my screen. Because I feel like I want to see every single little stroke I'm making. And since I'm going in here for the um, wing, 
I'm going to put the sketch above so I see what I do. I kind of want to like put a bit of a brighter colors some places to accentuate some feathers. It's going to be a very straightforward drawing. And uh, unfortunately, the tutorial itself is going to be, well, just put down colors where you think it looks good. Which is, I know, a very weird uh, way to do tutorials. But um, what you just have to think about is how the feathers are going on this cute little birdie. This is too dark for the bottom, but that's no problem because I want to lay down the shadows first anyways. I'm going, I am picking completely random colors from this color palette, by the way. I'm picking the ones that are speaking to me the moment and there's like no... I feel like there's no bad ones to pick. This one is a... I would say that this is a fun drawing or fun painting to do. This is not like a try hard painting. I hope it's not going to be feeling like that for you either. That it's a hard one. Since you will literally be just laying down some strokes. I will zoom in so you can see a bit better. Every streak stroke, <laughs> every stroke I do is a bit of a different hue and uh, variation of the color because the brush itself is uh, variated. So it's never the same color so just like when you are painting with real thick paints it's a uh, it depends on how you put down your brush on the paper paper or canvas in this case it's a bit depending on well it's just randomized really but um it gives, gives that effect and uh, makes it cuter. If you want to see uh, a different way to use these brushes, like uh, gouache brushes, I have a tutorial up on uh, what I did for Moonshine when it released. Uh, I don't have any brushes that you can download from there but uh, I keep using moonshine brushes I can't even remember if there's any now in the patreon pack I know that there is gouache brushes in the patreon pack but not from uh, moonshine it's from uh, Lunaro I'm rambling a bit I'm sorry but I just want to talk to you I'm wondering if I'm Adding a bit of like peachy color, it's a completely random idea. It, I might well remove it, but for now it's like uh, I added a new layer and I will add these peach dots and I might well change the color of these. I just uh, am marking out spots where it would be nice to have some variation. Or make it a bit more more of a magical pigeon. It will be a magic pigeon. And let's continue with the wing. So for the wing, when I think about our little pigeons in the garden that I look at almost every day, <laughs> they have bigger and bigger feathers. Uh, towards the end of their wings so I'm going to do bigger brush strokes here 
and for a second I'm going to turn off the sketch layer as well after I'm done with this part. The, the reality is that once you start doing these strokes, it's really hard to stop because it's just so meditative and it's so nice to see them appear and they are all layering so nicely. It's going to be a very traditional looking pigeon painting. I'm thinking about this big um, feathers. So I'm going to do the same here as well. I'm going to just layer down, down some colors or lay down some colors and then uh, turn off the layer to see or um, fix how I want it to look exactly. And um, I'm also thinking that I'm going to add a, another layer on top of this, so it not, it's not going to be on the same layer. I usually use uh, very few layers for my paintings, but this time I'm thinking that um, maybe I will add some darkness here, just gently uh, pressing down and... Uh, Maybe here for uh, some shadows. And uh, with a different blue as well. off it looks weird for now but we are trusting the process I am going to I'm really just varying, just varying these different blues there's uh, not really a secret to it it's just knowing what colors you are using, I guess. Like uh, what the color looks like that you are using. And uh, it's no worries like if you um, mess up, you can still correct it really easily. Since uh, you can just paint over. the messy part I don't know why I like pigeons, by the way. I don't know why I started with pink either. But yeah, I don't know what's my fascination with pigeons. They, they look so funny and, I don't know, kind of cute. And also the fact that we have pigeons in our garden, or at my parents' uh, garden, it's... Uh, like always checking what they are doing. How they're always together. How they are living their lives. They always have the same spot where they are. And then they are talking from the trees to each other. It's it's only a pair of pigeons, by the way. But they are very... Uh, it's a very nice pair of pigeons. I know it, it's very controversial or it, it can be since uh, um, city pigeons can be a bit of a hassle 
uh, to city people. And uh, even when we are at our own apartment, some pre- pigeon- pigeons can be really uh, well rude and uh, needy. But this pair is a very peaceful and cute pigeon pair, and they are feeding humans. So I'm doing very light strokes here with the uh, longer feathers. Just let the texture of the brush come out. And I will need some more shading here. I feel like I'm really just winging this as uh, I would draw with uh, or paint with uh, real gouache, which I am not like the greatest <laughs> with, but um, you know, we are just getting a feel for this brush, so it's all right to uh, not make it perfect. We are studying this brush, how this brush works, what we can use it in our own art. I'm not happy with how this looks, so I think I will continue with the smaller uh, strokes. I don't like when my, my Apple Pencil dies, like in the middle of a recording, and it always has to die in the middle of the recording. <laughs> like, it just stops working. It's not like dead, as in the battery is dead. It just decides to, like... Nope, I will not draw from for you anymore. I don't know, maybe it's a sign. I just really like the texture that I did on the bottom or the rest. And uh, I kind of want to continue doing that. I put this green here, but I'm thinking a green that is more on the blue side is a bit better because then it uh, gets more uh, blended in with the rest. God, we are halfway done already. Go so fast when you are drawing a pigeon. Just to mix it up, I'm doing a third way of doing uh, feathers here. I'm just painting out the base shape and I'm going to make another layer under this and uh, going to draw these long feathers under it because I think I will mess up my other feathers that I drew, if I don't make another layer. A bit lighter. I 
be darker. This pigeon is really becoming blue. And uh, I didn't really think of that. But I also don't really have a problem with it, to be honest. It doesn't have to be realistic. I always say that, but it's not an excuse that I keep using. It's just how it is. I am an illustrator, which for me means that I don't have to draw realistic. I have to draw what I perceive of the thing that I'm drawing. And if for me, a blue pigeon is something I like, then that is what it will be. As you can see, I'm layering three colors here, uh, one on top of the other, uh, three different blues, a deeper one, a middle one, and a lighter one, because I'm hoping that it kind of separates the feathers like this, but I'm also going to go in with an even deeper blue and smaller brush size to... Uh, you can take the line art out of the Lissified to do some line art, except I don't see what I'm doing because of my sketch. And uh, I'm thinking that that's my problem with the rest of this as well, that I am, I am a big fan of line art and there is no real line art here. And probably that's why it feels so off for me and not my style. See, it's all exploration and seeing what works for you. For me, the idea was that I would draw a pigeon that is uh, inspired by an artist that I'm going to link in the uh, description. I don't want to uh, what's it called? I don't want to um, miscredit the artist so I don't she's drawing a lot of birds with real uh, gouache I think it's gouache at least and um, her pigeon drawings are like really pretty well any bird really is really pretty that she does she does print as well so definitely check her out but yes, it's traditional and this one is inspired by her, definitely. She basically did the same pose for the pigeon. I just checked her how she would draw in. And uh, I thought about my copy-paste pigeons and the pigeon drawing that I did earlier this month for uh, Instagram. Uh, Someone asked for a pigeon drawing on Instagram <laughs> and uh, I did random pigeon do drawing. But yes, my pigeon is not as pretty as hers. I'm really trying to build up this artist, so please check her out. If you really want to see really pretty. Although I quite enjoy using these brushes, to be honest, or this brush that I'm using now. I oftentimes find myself that, uh, well, you might know that my art style changes a lot. Like, um, I always use different 
techniques because I always feel like I need to change. Uh, I'm one of those people who gets bored really easily of what they are doing. And um, so I change up a lot and I haven't been doing uh, any kind of drawing like this in the past year, I think. That's when uh, I made this brush set. And then I used it a lot since I always use it a lot before I release brush sets to make sure that uh, everything is good with it and they work well and they are usable and practical. And um, I haven't been using this for a year or so. And... Uh, when I come back to it like this with like brush of the month, I uh, get to also rediscover that hmm, I did not do as bad as I expect myself to do. That's not a really great speech, is it? But it's true at least. I have really high expectations uh, towards myself towards anything really oh my pan died again I don't know maybe it's the tip but I screwed on the tip just now and didn't felt loose or didn't feel loose so I don't know what's up with it Okay, there's like two feathers down here that are lonely and unpainted. I'm going to make a new layer for this again because I'm worried I'm going to mess up the others that I did. And I'm just going to go in and make small, small brush and do some shading on uh, the feathers like that shadow of it, right? go one layer above and do some really heavy shading here as well Maybe a bit bigger brush size. If you find that my brush is not correct for your uh, canvas size, which can be a problem actually, because I'm using huge, huge canvases and uh, I fit my brushes for that huge, huge canvas, just in case uh, other people are using huge, huge canvas as well. So, you know people don't run into the problem that, oh, this brush is too small for my stuff that I use. It's much better to um, prepare for the worst and then you can just fix it uh, if it's uh, too big for you. Then you go to brush settings and um, in properties you change the maximum size of the brush and then it will uh, um, adjust to your canvas a bit more it won't be as uh, jarring as uh, or big rather I hope that helps a bit. I always, I know I always say it in every video, but uh, there might be new people who are watching and who don't know about it. And uh, it's a really nice thing to know. I'm just doing shadows now under feathers that I wanted 
to accentuate and I might do some of this kind of uh, shadows as well I might do it on an actual different layer in case I don't like it so I can just get rid of it right away <laughs> I'm just thinking that uh, the light probably hits from the top um, in my scenario. It's not probably, it is, I decided, so the light is coming from the top. So feathers can be in shadows in this kind, this kind of areas. I'm not happy with the hue of those feathers that they are somehow a different blue and it feels like it's not connected to the rest of the bird so I'm changing it a bit with huge saturation and brightness and I am going to do a bit of a shading on it make it more new layer to make it more like it's part of the bird I'm going to use my usual shading technique to see if it makes me feel like it's more connected my usual shading technique is just this that it, I make it a bit of a 3d uh, shape and now I'm going to go to the layer and set it to multiply and lower the opacity it makes it a bit more well I guess mine because uh, this is the way I shade almost everything with this uh, cell shading kind of technique But you really don't have to do this, by the way. It's uh, just for myself. So I feel it more like, it's like, yes, this is mine. So let's do the rest of this lovely bird. I am thinking that it should have like a super, super lovely head. And uh, pigeons usually have like very, very few or like it almost looks like the, their head is smooth because the feathers are so small on it and they have this kind of stuff at their beak. So I'm going to paint this in. I'm pressing my pencil down a lot, like a lot, lot now to make it all opaque. about like this and I'm going to start doing the same line work as I did throughout the entire painting just around the neck area and the head and I want it to be well colorful This month, or well, in June, I learned a new um, 
technique from Marco Mazzoni on uh, Domestica on uh, how to not get overwhelmed by uh, drawing and I'm thinking about that technique right now because I feel like I don't know why it feels like it's a big area that's left and I think that is a very common feeling or can be a common feeling that overwhelm for uh, artists not just digital artists normal artists as well like traditional ones so um what uh, marco does is um he's a traditional artist artist and uh, he cuts out a piece of paper and make a little window where he can see his art and only fills out the part of the art where uh, his uh, focus is. He can only see just that part. So imagine just seeing this part of this painting and uh, he only hyper focuses on that part. And uh, by that, he uh, loses the feeling of super overwhelm because he just, uh, well, really doesn't see the rest of the art piece, so he doesn't have to worry about the rest. Just this one part, just make this one part the way you want, and then you can worry about the rest later. And uh, I tried it earlier in June on a portrait drawing that I did with pencil. It was a super, super detailed portrait drawing and uh, it took me a very long time to do the hair and uh, I tried this technique and it worked like a charm. <laughs> so uh, if you can, you should definitely take Marco Mazzoni's class on uh, drawing surrealistic animals on Domestica. This is not sponsored by Domestica, by the way. Domestica doesn't want to sponsor me. <laughs> uh, but um, I might will link uh, that video uh, there in the description. And I will use an affiliate link, which is not my affiliate link, but it will be an affiliate link for um, the Procreate for Beginners group on Facebook because it's a very nice Facebook group and uh, I feel like since I don't have an affiliate link that doesn't mean that like being like using someone else's code is just helping someone else and I would rather help someone else than just you know send you to a place to uh, get something I think affiliate links are really useful even if you don't have affiliate links I think it is really nice to uh, look for someone who, who you like and uh, want to support and ask for their affiliate link to share with friends and then at least they can benefit a bit from from it as well so I'm going to link uh, Christine April Frey's um, um, Domestica link under and you will be able to uh, directly sponsor the Procreate for Beginners Facebook group because uh, honestly it's the best Facebook group on Facebook for me and uh, it's a uh, it's very similar to my discord it's very uh, tightly moderated and uh, people are very kind so just because of that it's my favorite place to be favorite place to post as well when I'm on Facebook so I've been posting there since I was like a complete beginner and uh, <laughs> I feel a bit bad because uh, I'm not like a super beginner anymore and uh, sometimes when I post I worry that people are like wow why is she still posting here she's obviously not a beginner but at the same time i have over 100 posts there and uh, it goes from the like complete zero like no knowledge posts to uh well where i am now which is a bit more than 
the complete zero that I was. So it's a very nice uh, way to see the learning curve, really. And um, I'm really grateful that they still let me post there, even though I'm not a beginner or like not the complete beginner uh, that I was when I joined. And uh, I don't know, I just really like that group. I'm sorry that I keep going on and on about it. I uh, have a problem with these darks. They are too dark, I think. So I'm going to make them lighter. And uh, these are also too dark for me. Now that I did the top part of the bird, it uh, is too too much contrast on the butt or the body the butt <laughs> the butt of the bird uh yeah but now we are done with the base i'm just going to go crazy and add very pretty colors here because that's how i want it that's how i uh want to see it that it has lots of colors around its neck like a well, really, this is more like a parrot than a pigeon. It's a parrot pigeon thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, Procreate for Beginners, join if you haven't. Post that if you haven't. People are really nice, really kind. The engagement is great. And. Uh, Do not fear posting your art in places. Because posting your art in places is a good thing. Even if you feel very self-conscious, we all started somewhere. So Look at me being such a motivational speaker today. I am going to run through this drawing, um, run this drawing through um, my uh, photo editing program, I think, because I want to see every single stroke being very sharp. And um, I don't like the sharpen tool in Procreate. The Procreate sharpening tool is also nice. But if you have a photo program on your iPad or on your phone, then uh, my experience is that photo programs are way better at sharpening images than uh, Procreate is. So, or maybe it's the fact that, uh, once again, too big canvas. I use way too big canvas for uh, Procreate sharpen to go through the way I want it to go. So it might be that, but yes, I will definitely run it through uh, the 1998 cam, which is my chosen photo app to make it a bit more uh, sharper. And uh, with that, the strokes will be more visible as well these are the unfortunate parts of digital art that you have to go these little extras the extra things to do when making art now he's super fancy so I put this gray here for the beak. It's really a gray, purple gray. No, I think this part was a white, whiter part of the beak, not the darker part. And I am going to use the black for the eye 
smaller. This is one fancy pigeon. And uh, now we only have one part left to finish. And that is the tiny feet. And um, I'm stalling because I initially thought that I wanted dark color for the feet. But now I'm thinking... I want some kind of orange. This is not the feet yet, don't worry. This is the extra layer that I wanted to add in the beginning that is definitely staying. So I'm just going to make sure that it blends into this part. So first I wanted to make black feet because our pigeons have black feet. The ones that are in the garden. But... Now I'm thinking that maybe it would be nice to have some different feet for this little guy. Like maybe an orange feet would take away from its uh, glorious pigeon, pigeoness, pigeon, pigeoness. So <laughs> I am thinking I will just make it with black and then... Uh, No additional detailing or anything. Just make it with black. Little claw. No. The claw doesn't look good like this. There won't be any claw. And... Uh, I want this canvas to be balanced and I feel like it's gonna be balanced like this and we need a background color so for background color I'm going to super big my uh, brush and um, Well, I could either go some kind of pinkish color or some kind of greenish color. No. Or some yellow. You know, my go-to color is always yellow. It is super nice, this brush, to make backgrounds. So smooth, it's like really, really nice. Like, look at the texture. Okay, so the blue and this orange slash um, yellow is a bit uh, clashing for my eye. Uh, this is bad. Let's turn off the sketch so it looks better. So here it, it hurts my eye a bit. So we are going to go into hue, saturation, brightness to see what would not hurt my eye. Always have to stop at the pink for a second. Yeah, the soft pink is probably the best, which is exactly the same that the original artist that I'm going to link in the description uh, chose as well. I thought I can be original here with the background color, but no. So 
I'm not sure what I'm trying to achieve here with this starting of the line stroke. I don't know why it's so important for me that it has some kind of um, bigger uh, contrast, but I want it to have a bigger contrast. And I don't like it. <laughs> oh, enjoy the artistic process, are we? Okay, let's do a blob of shadow under. With the pink now that we already picked. I'm sorry that I never really do the colors correctly. <laughs> I am just a very experimental artist, I guess. And I'm going to pick up my own color palette that you can find on Patreon, by the way, if you ever uh, need it. And uh, I'm going to do my overlays that I usually do that will unify my art across every platform, which is quite important for me. And um, I'm going to add my signature with... Um, the last pink that we used not this one that is for pencils but this one and uh, I will share it and I'm going to show you how I put it through um, the photo editor as well so I'm using 1998 cam and uh, this can do a bunch of filters with your art but it's not really the important thing uh, for me the important thing is that it can do um, the sharpening, these are presets that I already did with uh, other artworks of mine and I saved the preset. And uh, this is for the Vibrento file, which is basically was only for uh, sharpening. And when you zoom in, you see every single brush stroke, super sharp. And it also adds a little bit of noise. So uh, it looks more crisp overall, which uh, I enjoy. And uh, let's turn the iPad back, get the Photos app, and uh, here you see the difference. This is the sharpened version. You can see the brush strokes like this, and this is the un oops, sorry, this is the unsharpened version. It's uh, it's blurry and uh, undefined. So I would definitely. Uh, recommend using some kind of photo editing app to uh, sharpen it doesn't sharpen this while in procreate but yeah we are done with our little pigeon it's a bit funky and it definitely is just an illustration <laughs> but uh, it was a fun, a fun exercise for me to discover my brush so I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you like it and um don't forget to download the brush until the end of the month, the end of July, because after that it will be gone and then you can't download it anymore. But also, since this is the brush of the month, there's uh, a 15% off code for uh, the Moonshine set 
that I have on Gumroad, which is a full-blown gouache set that is uh, featuring a bunch of different ways to to use gouache brushes and uh, I put a lot of love, dedication and everything into it and uh, here's the brush that we use now and uh, the rest is all here it does normal gouache brushes even dry brushes um, and accenting and these kind of wet brushes so a lot of things washes and uh, everything you would want from a gouache set even uh, these kind of background textures that I made with real gouache in real life. I was just crouching down learning gouache on the floor <laughs> to be able to create this brush set. I always make sure that I know the real life material to be able to uh, make the best brushes for you guys. So I hope you will enjoy and uh, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial that was very unprofessional. And uh, I will see you in the next one, on the 1st of August. Or if you're a Patreon, then on the 25th of July, which is usually, or that's my goal to publish my next video. So yeah, have fun. Bye.